TV. Hey everyone, welcome to Playgrounds TV Games. Tonight or today we'll be discussing concept art for The Last of Us Part 2. I have here with me Jad Saber and Florent Lebron. And they're gonna, yeah, I'll just give them time to inter introduce themselves and uh, yeah, take it from here, Saba. So thanks for having us, uh, Denar. So I am Jad Saber and I have worked with, uh, you know, my colleagues Denar and Florent on Last of Us 2. We've worked on Uncharted, uh, Lost Legacy as well with the One Pixel Brush team. We've worked on a bunch of other games, but these are the most notable ones. And we are here today to, uh, to discuss with you you know, share our experiences of how yeah. it was working on Last of Us 2. Yeah. Yes, so my name is Florent Lebrun, and I work with those uh, two beautiful faces uh, on The Last of Us uh, at One Pixel Brush. And uh, yeah, I've been working like uh, as a concept artist for the past three or four years. Before yeah. that, working as a matte painter for about, you know, 10 years. And yeah, so. You've worked on a few uh, short films, right, uh, as a matte painter, uh, Florent? <laughs> Few, yeah, few movies. Yeah, like, what uh, are yeah. the movies? Uh, uh, Harry, Harry Potter, so I'm that old. And uh, yeah, Game <laughs> of Thrones. Uh, I actually Ball. watched that, man. I actually watched uh, that in the cinema. I also worked on the other one, uh, War of the Titans. No, Wrath of the Titans. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a so pretty cool fun. movie, man. A bad, good cool movie, you know. Yeah, it was you, a, you that cool movie. Pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, guys, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. I was thinking, first question would be interesting to, how did the concepts translate to the game and what were the gameplay constraints that you faced when working on the concept art? Yeah, that's a pretty inter interesting question actually. So some of the concepts I noticed while I was you know, playing the game, mm -hmm. uh, they, they stay pretty true to what we did in the concept art. Yeah. So, it's like it makes a great reference for the the modelers and then the lighting artists, etc. And I just copy it, you know, not copy it. I mean, you know, draw from it, but in a way that it looks almost exactly like the concept. And right. sometimes they just take the mood, you know, and try to to make something out of the mood. But I guess sometimes there's a lot of changes in relation to the storyline or to the game that at the time that you did the concept art, you didn't know. So you know, things change all the time. Right. So, yeah. I mean, uh... I mean, adding to that, it's uh, it's actually interesting how at the end, like the game looks amazing, obviously, right? But the concept art department was pushing itself so hard that we actually made it too detailed on some concepts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 the generation of consoles couldn't actually handle That's that type point. of detailed in concepts, you know, like they actually had to kind of strip apart some areas. Yeah. And it's it's... It's crazy because you know our our mental bar was so high for the Last of Us one, and not necessarily because it was so realistic, but I kind of always remembered it as being super realistic because at that point that was the most realistic game that we played. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's more my memory talking to me to yeah. how that experience was. Well, so you know, early on I noticed that we didn't compare ourselves to Last of Us one because we already knew like, oh, it's not going to be that. Because I remember getting the, uh, I think you had that as well, uh, Florent, getting the images from John Sweeney and, you know. Yeah, like the first one, his... very first one. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. I know it's going to be challenging, but not not that much. You know, because yeah, you receive the first concept. And, uh, okay, that's that's a different game than the first one. It's not the same, the same anymore. So, yeah. Exactly. And, and, and on top of that, you, you are work, we are working with guys who are, it was like at, at, after a while a, a funny comp like a fun competition where these guys yeah. worked on the first one and on Uncharted 4 and on this and on yeah. that. So their experience was also super challenging and motivating for us. Yeah, it's yeah. Friendly competition, you know. Yeah, man. It's, it's, uh, you know, between them, between us as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That exactly. was never like to overtake, you know, the you, you know, your friend that works on no, it, just no. to push yourself and push everyone. So that that was cool. You yeah, know? it was that never driving us forward. Yeah, yeah. I, I I can guarantee you that if we did like, especially speaking for me, if we didn't have that group where we almost work daily, yeah, I wouldn't sure. have become so far quality wise as I have yeah. now. I mean, I remember the pressure was when we first started out. 
you know, for 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 me, it was a bit too much because, like you guys were saying, like the standards the standards were were too high. Yeah. But then it's like you were just saying when we started actually working together as a group and you know doing hangouts, asking each other for feedback all the time. I think this helped me a lot. Speaking for myself to yeah, right. you know to, to 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 be to become better actually, and I just started learning much much faster because we were actually discussing the work that we were doing instead of just you know sending it to Shadi and yeah. him sending it to Naughty Dog and then us getting you know a few lines of feedback but actually talking to each other and, and helping each other I think that helped us a lot right and even you know just you know that way of working because we all freelancers so sometimes it, you know it kind of feel lonely you working yeah, on one project you're on but you know that particular experience felt like we were almost in house because it was almost every day we were doing like the hangout for yeah. at least yeah man because we had like different you know time uh, we are at different time but it was at least like three four hours a day so that was pretty I, cool I, yeah man i remember you know every monday we would get a new uh briefing right yeah and then it's kind of like lottery like oh which one do i got which one do i have <laughs> like after a while we even got mad like no i want that one <laughs> not this one not but if, it, burnt car. if you had the one you wanted you wanted the other one so it, yeah, it was bro. always there because yeah. every, every brief was, was cool it just it's, you know. it's 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 insane, man. Like we, after a while, the you notice, but, but that's because we grew in the quality of knowing what Naughty Dog wants. So once we got we got the hang of that, when you get like a small briefing of like, for example, a a a, ch a child who committed suicide or a girl who committed suicide in a bathroom, and that's it. If I had to make that before I worked on The Last of Us, I would do the most cliche thing and super boring. But knowing that mentality of work for Last of Us, and then you get that idea, yeah. you're like, oh shit, I can do so much with this, right? Like the yeah. lighting can hit like that, the, the grass maybe, like the carpets, or, you know, you can, you're you thinking of everything in that scene already. Yeah. So, it, yeah. I guess it, it also pushed us to, uh, like, what something that I learned from working, uh, you know, with Naughty Dog and with you guys is to really spend your time searching for 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 reference and yeah, because this is how basically you're not going to get things like when you get a brief you're not going to get things out of your head and just make the perfect image no. but if you start looking for reference and more reference and you actually find the perfect reference of what they're asking of you then you will like your work will will be much much better for sure man it's, you're sure. going to save time you know you, you might feel yeah. you lose time at, at the beginning but at the end you're going to save like you know shit ton of time just because otherwise you might end up redoing something because yeah. you find the references right after so exactly. but it was also a project where like while doing it we were also trying to learn new things like you know i think this this is what i what i got the most from uh, uh when florent came into our group we yeah. kind of it, it it wasn't like he's preaching or anything he was just doing it and after a while we were like hey man how the fuck do you <laughs> like how do you come up with this all this this whole thing you know what i mean yeah. As in, like the mentality of all this reference research that you do, kind of being super precise with like what lighting you use or what what direction you want to do, or which tools we can use. You know, like every time I remember, I I think we all learned Blender while working on The yeah. Last of Us, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was like Balash, one of the Balash, worst Balash, weeks, man. Our Balash started. We made the before, switch. Like, kind of, yeah. Okay. Balash yeah. switch before. Yeah, I remember Jama really being the guy telling. Yeah. I think it was in France. In Barcelona, in we were in Barcelona. Barcelona, yeah, yeah, Barcelona. And then he had a call with all three of us. He was like trying to pitch us Blender in like what forty <laughs> minutes. And the day after, immediately we all installed it. We just started, yeah. And the yeah, year man. after, everyone was on it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so. <laughs> everyone was on it. I was already on it, dude. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, but just to show you that tools don't do a lot for you if you don't understand lighting. You know, like one one of the things that I learned while looking at all of you guys' work is, you can like me, you, Jad, everybody who works on Blender has the same tools, right? Like light, the sun is the same tool, the HDRI is the same tool, anything that you can add or mega scans yeah. or whatever, it's the same all. But it's about like his understanding of what would work in the storytelling, or uh, which. Uh, 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 which direction should I put the light so that it kind of tells a story or shows, you know what I mean? Like this is all the small nuances that people forget when they think they're going to do 3D. 
Yeah, I mean, there are there are a lot of tools today, right? You have the VR headset, you have Blender, you have Cinema 4D, you have Modo, you have, I don't know, Modos. They're not using it that much anymore, but you have so many softwares, you know, and all the time tutorials about these softwares. And it's cool to have a multitude of, 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 of techniques and, of, and tools at your disposition. But I would say for people starting out, it just doesn't, if you don't know how to design something or, you know, you don't know composition and lighting, like you were saying, no. It just doesn't matter to know. No. All this. So for now, no, I would say check like most. Out. I mean, if you're starting out for now, just pick one of these tools. It's enough that you can use, and just mm -hmm. focus on learning, you know, the fundamentals first, and then you can learn whatever. Even like the first image I did on the, pro and even I think like sixty percent of the image that they, they were like no 3D or maybe like five percent yeah. of 3D. So yeah, yeah. So so the, like, uh, you know, the share, uh, yeah. you know, the image, yeah. first image from Florent. Well, there was no 3D. You were saying, uh, Florent. Yeah, no 3D. Uh, I mean, like even that snow, snow image in Jackson, you know, there is no 3D. Yeah. There, there is like, or even at some point it was maybe like 20, 30 percent 3D. I think the more we move forward in the project, the more we kind of implemented like heavy 3D. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. It was like this one, yeah. had a, you know, a base of 3D, of course, but there was a base. Like if you go to, to, yeah, to the first one, you know, that that river and it's uh, uh where's the river one? I think Flo Jad had that one, but yeah, just looking okay, at this, right? Just looking at this, it's, you know, it's, it's this like two, three years ago, you would say detail, but right now you can even go more detail. I, I can, want, yeah. Right? And 3D you mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 exactly. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you should just because you can, doesn't mean you have to, right? Like I, I do feel like, I don't know about you guys, but I do feel like sometimes I'm pushing the 3D so much that yeah. I'm kind yeah. of not looking forward into Photoshop anymore because I don't have much to do. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, I could have stopped way sooner. Definitely, man. I'm, I'm actually starting to back down a little bit from that. Just, mm. you know, just to try. It's always good to change, I think, from time to time. Your work. Yeah. Things. Yeah, for sure. Because I think what, what's important if if you go detail and then you when you do a render and you notice like some detail, like some areas don't work, just understand why it doesn't work. Yeah. For example, maybe it's too noisy. That's why it didn't work. Maybe that cloth, like for example, he kept all he kept all of this just a, one color because he knew that if he would put a pattern or something on it, it's going to be too noisy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it, it's it's all about these small. And then at the end, he adds a, a patch of you know like, bro, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, DK and stuff on it. You know, but it's yeah. still if you look at it, you notice that the uh, it, it doesn't change a lot uh, with, with yeah, the composition is here, the lighting is here. Exactly. Yeah, he's just adjusting all the main uh, pieces, you know, the, even some small pieces here. And the, yeah. like, this one is probably like, let's say, maybe 80% uh, or maybe 90%. Yeah, because they were like back and forth with 2D and 3. Because I know I added those lamps, I had like the, yeah. that stuff on the wall after, so it was back and forth with the 3D. Yeah, yeah. this one was a. Uh... I mean, half of them, like even, even I, I remember even for this one, you it's have like, to see, but then you merge that half of the like it's just photos, right? Like all the greenery, basically, it's photo. just photos. Yeah, there is no three D for the. And that's like understanding something like this to know how to do that because everybody can, like I can guarantee you, he can give you the same brushes, the same photos, the same three D file if you want, but you're not gonna get the same results because he understands light more. Exactly. Like, you know, that's the whole point of it. We're designing light and shadows, right? And it goes like, what well, if we're talking about Florent, it goes to, uh, you know, back to his matte painting days where yeah. he acquired all this knowledge of, of lighting. Because, you know, as a matte painter, you have to make a perfect uh, photorealistic painting that's going to actually be in the movie as a background, right? So in order yeah. to do that, you need tremendous uh, knowledge, tremendous amount of knowledge of how light works, how materials work, and all this stuff, whether it be in 2D or in... You you know, in 3D, because at the end of the day, the, it's the end result that counts. So, yeah, there, there's a lot that we actually learned from uh, Florent about these things while yeah. working, which we were you pretty know, lucky and, to. And taking an example of your image here, John, I would say, like, you know, even thinking about the fact that maybe the patches of the ivy is too big or too small or, you know, mm -hmm. with this tear up or break up, you know what I mean? Like, you notice that you kind of sketched it here, yeah. but from this point on, you know that it's just a value that yeah. I have to sketch, right? 
Yeah, it's like for some small lighting. details or if it's in the background, you can just, you know, you don't have to, to be super anal about it, but you can just scribble or paint a little bit. And usually exactly. it's the trick, you know. So it's, yeah, it's really about, I, I would say it's with experience that this comes, you know, yeah. you, you begin mm -hmm. to know when you can paint and when you can use a photo. But you can't rush it. Yeah, you can't rush it. Yeah, I mean, like you can't rush the the idea of time where you're like no i want it now like i want it between yeah, now and a month like it's yeah, just impossible man i guess you mean like if you just if you're painting in a rough way and you're scribbling i mean you wouldn't get to this quality that they were asking of us for sure if, if you yeah yeah like like really some things really take time and i still don't feel like i know a lot about lighting i kind of know a bit about lighting so yeah that says a lot you know what i mean it's you know, yeah. like the deeper you dig, the the, the the tired, like the bigger it gets. The question is just like it's every answer you get like ten more questions yeah. in your head. So it's just that's always going to be the case. So you might as well just stick to that. Like I always thought when I before I started working on Last of Us, I thought like you know as soon as I work on that, then I'm going to be happy. I don't want anything anymore, man. Yeah. That's going to change, man. You're gonna you're gonna set new goals. You're gonna do that and set new goals. Do that and fail a shit ton of time, but. You know, just learn to accept it, man. To yeah. embrace it. And it sounds super easy, but it, it is the case. By the way, seeing these skeletons, I, I remember uh, that you and Florent started, you know, when yeah. we had the brief for those, you guys started figuring out, we needed to figure out like a process, like how are we going to do this? Because yeah. mainly we were doing environments, right? And now we have to do like these skeletons with DK and clothes on them. So I remember you guys came out with the... Uh, Came came up with a with a process. If you want to talk about it, I think it's interesting yeah, because you know just in the in the idea of how every time there's a new brief, there's a new problem to solve. So how do yeah, we approach oh, right. it? What software do That's we use? Question. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I mean for this one, uh, they had a briefing and they had some uh, images that they sketched, but it was more sketchy and obviously we wanted more realistic. So yeah. I remember that uh, Shadi did a briefing for us kind of explaining what he's looking for. So in the sense of, all right, I want to see the flesh, the bone and the cloth to be all visible and separated from each other, but yet still it has to feel like it's one, right? Yeah. yeah. So based off that, we kind of did research on, you know, how kind of skeletons would fall or what would be, what kind of pose would be interesting. And then I, it was all teamwork, you know, we kind of yeah, collected just, a shit ton of references. Laurent, you used the, the physics in Blender, right, to make the skeleton? Nah, not even, man. It, uh, it was uh, all a 3D code, so not oh, even it was just, yeah. It was yeah. that yeah. 3D code, yeah. 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 You kind of have that, that basic clothes in, the, in 3D yeah. code that I used. Yeah, exactly. Because it was so decayed that even if it was looking like pretty bad, but I know like um, Dana, you, you might have used, you know, other software, other method to do it. So Yeah, I, I used for this one, I actually used Marvelous, but at yeah. the end, yeah. I, I just had it as a base and this one as yeah. well. But for this one, I actually went to a second store uh, here. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I bought a couple of clothes and then I ripped them apart. It was like a year or two and then yeah. I ripped them apart. This is actually me in a pose. And this yeah. was a like a DAS model that I took into, uh, uh, what was it? I it's think not, it was. not looking too good, uh, this DAS model. No, this guy is a bit too long <laughs> over. And uh, yeah, man, it's just the rest is, you know, like taking, checking photos and kind of staying as uh, realistic as possible. And, yeah. and thinking about the idea of, all right, how long has he been dead? And like, how would the blood look like? You know, obviously when you go yeah. more down, kind of looks worse. And I think Florent has the final one. This but, one, so we have stages. That's what's fun, you know, talking about, about the process. Because you see, trying to figure out the process, but at the end, everyone had his own process. It was not even, you know, just using no. always the same recipe. So that's no, great. No. It was, it was fun, always yeah. a different process to learn, man. I, I always had that in the beginning when I did an image. I thought, oh, now I know greenery, cool. And then the next image, like, oh fuck, okay, I didn't count for this because the lighting looks different. You know, it's just kind of finding that one tune of. I think it's more important to find a process than necessarily a tool. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Once you have a process, you're good to go, you know? Yeah. That's the hardest part usually when, especially when you get like a new task that you're not, something you're not used to, to doing, but you have to do it because it's your job to figure things mm -hmm. out. So mm -hmm. you have to figure out the process. And you know, it's cool. If anybody wants to check out our process, all of us have, uh, I think, a video right now. Uh, a tutorial on it. Yeah. 
So you can just check out like th those are many of the processes. But yeah. what I would just say is like if you are interested in a process, it doesn't necessarily mean that you watch one tutorial and then you have to change your whole process. You just think like, all right, what of that tutorial speaks to me? And yeah, maybe I can exactly. incorporate it into my process. Hmm. Right? Because at the at okay. the end of the day, man, maybe like Florent, you wake up at seven and you start working. Jad, you wake up at at, uh, at eight. I also wake up at eight, but like for me, I take like an hour, hour and a half, for example, to do nothing. And some people work around 12, so it's fine, man. It's just you have to find your own process. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that brings you to the question that, you know, often they ask us, like, how do you get your own style or whatever? And I'm, I'm always saying, you know, just look at the people that you admire, the artists, and from each of those artists, you're just going to learn maybe something, you know, if you like yeah. how this guy does the lighting or how he does the shapes, how he does the brush, the brush marks. So you take that from each artist and at the, at the end you will end up with your own style anyways you know you don't have to and a style is not it's not necessarily just like the way it's drawn or painted it also can be the way you tell your stories yeah you know like you know, we all look uh, all of the okay. last of us two for most people may look the same but you know we can individually pick out who did what and who did what you know what i mean because you kind mm -hmm. of see the way he tells his story or for example balash's images were always super graphical right yeah, because he had a history in yeah. that. And Antoine, but it was always had that. Yeah, you know something that really fit all the, you know the, the 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 concept. We don't even if you can identify you did that, I did that. You know, just yeah. try to be you know as close as the you know what, you know the project is. So like exactly. realistic lighting, real, you know. Yeah, bring back you know bring the cinematography, bring you know something. So and man, finding a style is. Like you can't ask somebody or expect yourself to find a style where you're still learning stuff. You know what I mean? Like you still have to learn fundamentals, man. Definitely. What are you talking about yeah. style? Like my mentality is just making my image as realistic as possible and then telling a cool story about it. Mm -hmm. That's the mentality. And as, soon, as long as you push for that realistic lighting, it's going to add so much to your yeah. image, man. I mean, especially if you're, if you're starting out and you're looking for work uh the end goal is to produce quality images it's not to have your own style odds are you're going to be asked to maybe replicate someone's style or mm. to fit your style to the project that you're working on so you know at the end of the day we're looking for work we're not like fine artists and we want our own style to sell our old paintings and be known throughout history and then when yeah. buy, the price go up it's not the goal the goal is to find a job so i don't think it's something people should be thinking about you know you should just be thinking about getting good and if you have to simulate or emulate someone that you admire in order to achieve that then just do it because it's going to help you a lot it's a good shortcut for me what worse is is if you have a well rendered image but with bad lighting than if you have a well uh, or bad rendered image with good lighting i would choose for the second one because still lighting goes on top of like yeah, how definitely. realistic your image looks like you know yeah, it's like looking at the greatest, I think one of my favorite images from uh, Last of Us are usually mostly the guys who like do a lot of painting, you know, like Eitan or like um, mm. uh, uh, Nick's old man. Nick's, Nick's Last of Us one art still holds up so fucking high, man. It's insane. Yeah, and that's because, you know, we were talking about that uh, last time. Is that Nick 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 Jindro? He's painting a lot, so this is why yeah. it still holds up. But because the other guys, you know, they were using photos, and at the time, most of the photos were of lower resolution. They mm -hmm. were not as available as today. You know, now everybody could take a photo with his cell phone, and it's a high-res photo, and he uploads it to the net, so you can find reference, high-res sure. reference, more easily. So I think that brought up the quality, plus you know having better computers and better performance of graphic yeah. art and stuff like that. But yeah, Nick, he was painting most of the time right so this is exactly why it still looks good to this day yeah yeah so man florin tell me one of your favorite moments related to this project it doesn't have to be an image or something but like maybe a moment we hang out or a moment that you're like oh yeah that's the moment he he kissed you on the cheek maybe <laughs> yeah i don't, I don't know, know man, the one a... on the mouth man <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty hard to pick, man. Like it was pretty fun, you know, all the way. Like like from doing that, or with, when we were in LA and we met the team, that was pretty cool, you know, just yeah. be over there. I think that that's like for for the three of us, like and uh, yeah, that was the that was pretty cool, you know. You kind of see, you know, where the game is at, and you manage to 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 meet the team. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, man, and kind of. 
you know, see that they're also realistic human beings like us. Yeah. And they also have fears and they also, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you you always think that it's not, uh, they're different than you. That's yeah. why they're good. You're just dead. And then and playing the game because we have to wait like, you know, it, it, it delayed <laughs> and delayed and you can't, oh, I want to play the game. So oh even playing God. the game, like, you know, just, you know, launching the game and you just mm. have like those, those five first minutes, that's, that was, you know, pretty cool. Yeah, but man. you know, the coolest thing was like to, uh, when they said that every time they were receiving our art, you know, our concept art, they were like, oh, like these bastards, we have to do better than them. And for us, it was funny because it was actually the exact same thing. You know, when, when Shadi was showing yeah. us their concept art, we were like, how the hell did they manage to do something that good? You know, and it, it was driving us all the time Yeah, yeah. To, to do better. Grass is always greener on the other side, man. I swear yeah. to God. <laughs> we will never get used to that. It was, I mean, we were lucky to have, I guess, an art director such as John Sweeney, who is very, you know, he's like, he's young. I mean, he's like 32, something like that. And he's has a mentality where instead of micromanaging what you're doing, like you would let the artist actually do yeah. his thing. Yeah. And he has a very good sense for uh, cinematography and these kinds of things, which is very important to to a game such as Last of Us 2, which is basically yeah. kind of like told like a movie, right? For sure, yeah. yeah. So Jad, what are we seeing here? So this is one of the images that I, I thought it was interesting to to uh, to bring up because, you know, I had uh, a brief to do this, this image from up top. So it's an mm -hmm. area in Seattle. And of it's course- It's pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, it, already the angle is hard whenever you have something from a top view because there are there are less references available. The, the more the most references uh, that you will find online are references that are from eye level, right? Because people are always taking pictures when, when exactly. they're standing usually. Yeah. yeah. So always, you know, you get a new brief. You start thinking, okay, how can I solve this? Should I start with 3D or should I start with a photo? So in this case, it's pretty interesting because I actually started from Google Earth, you know. And I'm not the genius that came up with this idea. I just knew that, you know, the guys were using it before to, to make images. So I thought, all right, and here's the, the photo plate that I started from the, I mean, the, the plate that I got from Google Earth. So as you can see, the lighting is, doesn't have anything to do with, with the final product, but it gives me perspective. It yeah. gives me scale, it gives me all this information that I need. And then what I did from, from this image, I just, I just uh, did a scribble in black and white. Denar, if you can switch uh, to that one, it should be next to it. Yes, this is the one. So as you can see, it's not uh, very pretty to scribble. It doesn't look that good, but I just wanted to have to group my values in a way that, you know, my lighting makes sense storytelling wise to have a focal point, which in this yeah. case is the building on the left that is right. broken and, you know, start playing around with the uh, putting some trees and masking them where there's going to be water, where there's going to be destruction. So just it's kind of like scribble that's going to help you figure out and understand what you're doing. And once you have that, even though it looks doesn't look that good, at least it takes away the stress of what am I doing, right? So now I mm -hmm. know what, what, what I'm going to do. Yeah. I have I have a path that good, I'm going to yeah. follow. Yeah. So just one of the many processes that we've used, I just thought it would be interesting to show. Yeah, it's just uh, it's super smart. You're just guiding yourself. Yeah, you know, exactly. and making sure you're not taken over by detail. Exactly, because usually mm -hmm. the so, sometimes the art director would, would do a scribble, right? Sometimes John Sweeney would send us a scribble in black and white. Yeah. And I would actually love that because, okay, so I know what he wants, right? I just have to do something like that, but photorealistic and with good lighting, etc. So in this case, I was just doing it for myself because I wasn't yeah. getting any scribble from the art direction. And yeah, yeah man, so I think and, uh, yeah. people really underestimate how... Like we've met a couple of people where their art is amazing, right? But they weren't fit to work at that time at OPP. Yeah. So it, just because you have good art doesn't mean necessarily that it's going to be as easy working for a client because, yeah. you know, like if you work on a personal and some area doesn't work, you just kind of hide it or something like you have that option. But exactly. for a client, he wants to be specific from that perspective. It's exactly. going to be like this, this and yeah. that and good luck. Exactly. If a tree doesn't work on your personal, maybe you can replace it by a rock, right? Exactly. Who, who's going to tell you what to do? But 
for professional work, you have some specific constraints that you have to follow. So if they want the lighting like this, if they want the trees to be here, they have to be here. If you can't make it look good, that's your problem. So you have yeah, to figure the yeah, way to solve. exactly, man. Yeah. So, so what so would what, be the most, if, if you like in a couple of words, right? If you could advise somebody who is looking to get into the industry, let's kind of narrow it down to if anybody has any dreams or hopes or whatever of working for Naughty Dog, what would be the pointers? as an advice for these people. Florence, you want to answer that? I don't know, just like what you have to do, like in terms of, of image and, and stuff like that, you mean? Exactly. I mean, it could be, yeah, yeah whatever. Because I guess if it's that, just look at, you know, what, the, you know, has been released, like all the concept and it, it's because I think like why we ended up also working on that because we did that trying to, to do, yeah. you know, Naughty Dog style. No. You know, you, you no. kind of, so. I think you, you kind of have to match, you know, what what they they are doing, in terms yeah. of quality of style of everything. So it's it, it, there is no like big secret if you want to work like for Naughty Dog. Just you have to to show like Naughty Dog portfolio almost, you know. Doing yeah. Kind of, um, what what is a Naughty Dog portfolio for you? If you could sum it up and like, what's I mean, the most important like part? Obvious, but I guess for some people, you know, they they they, they have a hard time. Yeah. I guess yeah, the, all the. All what like we talked about, you know, realistic lighting, trying to have that cinematographic kind of look, and mm -hmm. especially for the Last of Us, because Uncharted was, you know, it's it's a bit different style, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, style, not yeah. really, because it it, it it still keep the same principles, but uh, you know, which Last are, of Us was that, yeah. Which are what the principles you mean? Value you know, group. like composition, you know, lighting, all that shape grouping that we've been, yeah. you know working on that for the for the project all those that we already, I mean, you know it's pretty interesting i remember that when you know when we started that sweeney showed us uh, in the art direction some uh, ghibli images yeah that, yeah that was great yeah those those guidelines yeah that was the probably the best best stuff in your oh yeah actually that's uh, <laughs> because it's realistic lots of us but yeah. at the same time they just they were admiring how with the ghibli paintings they were grouping the values so yeah. well the trees are green the vegetation yeah, is green, green. Everything so well, yeah. Yeah, and we use the he they use that to kind of give us the guidelines. Like it should be realist, yeah. realistic, but at the same time perfectly readable, and the values should be grouped, every element separated, yeah, etc. And still, man, I think you also have to have the work ethic of it doesn't matter if uh, you're at that level or not. You still have to want to grow more. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Sure. Like they're not looking sure. for somebody who just can't do that now. But he's not capable of growing, mm. right? As in, you know, it, it's not to say that we're working 16, 17 hours a day or like any of that bullshit. But what I meant more is, like sometimes we got uh, constraints, right? For like 25 hours to 30. Man, I spent like 40 to 45 at the beginning. I remember 50 to 60 yeah. because <laughs> I didn't do it to for to just for the payment or for the title. I actually want to get better. And earn their respect as well, and from you guys as well, you know. Like yeah. for us, when we were, it was friendly. Friendly competition for me was like, if I see your image, I will always try to uh, push it to the next level. If there's anything wrong, same goes for you, for me, and all of us for each other. Yeah. And that's super healthy competition because we even shared our own 3D with each other, like alphas, like photos. It doesn't matter, man, because at the end of the day, we kind of knew like it's not about that. Yeah. It's about understanding how lighting works, how perspective works. Remember, man, I, that that time that I kind of had like a hard time. Wait, let me show you with this image. So I had a hard time. I, I was making the composition. I had a hard time figuring out the perspective and my eye, eyes weren't just seeing it. Like I just couldn't see it for some reason. Florent was like, yeah, the camera are, is wrong or the lens is, uh, is wrong. And at that time, I didn't know much about that. So yeah. just by taking like, remember, like I took like two to three weeks off to do perspective, like it really helped mm. because I just focused on one thing. And it doesn't mean that I was a god at perspective. It just meant that, you know, making that idea in your head of, oh, wait, if the box is in that way of perspective, then the light yeah. would hit it in this direction or something like that. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like every time it's like, uh, you know, here in Holland, we say F and flute, you know, where the water goes up and down. It's kind of like that, you know, like so you sometimes you have your best days, sometimes you have your bad days, but then you kind of have to figure out why it's bad and then try to fix that for the next image. Yeah, because issuing with lighting and perspective 
it's going to come back every single image because like to the big rocks and mountains in your perspective to the smallest detail, like your favorite art artist will knows, uh, notice. Maybe not everybody on the internet, but your favorite one do notice. So, you know, yeah. just to aim higher, try to try to focus on that as well. I mean, to do to do good work, to do amazing work, even good work, I would say, not mm -hmm. not not even amazing, but just it, if it has to be good, then you definitely need to put all of these perspective and composition and you know uh, color theory. This has to be second yeah. nature. It has to be done. You know. Yeah, man. So yeah, man. Once yeah, it's yeah, done, then you can focus on designing and and making decisions. But if you're struggling with a perspective. How can you, you know, you're, how can you design? You're, 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 you're spending your time trying to make the perspective correct, and then you know the the day is is done, and you haven't designed shit, right? Yeah, because it doesn't matter if you have like if you have, let's say, you have an environment image, right? But for yeah. some reason, you don't know how lenses work, or why different directors use different lenses, and yeah. in what story element do you use the lens? It's all these smaller questions, and at yeah. this point of time in in concept art, man, you almost have to be like a vivid movie goer. You have yeah. to be like a director. You have to. I mean, especially everything. for this type of project, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. We, I think we learned a lot about lenses and you know how, like, framing. Yeah. Should, yeah. should it be wide? Should it be a uh, long focal length? Uh, working on this project because it's, as I said, it's very movie-like, right? It's all about mm -hmm. storytelling and movies. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's. And that's uh, why the, the concept where maybe like time-consuming, as you said, just because, mm -hmm. you know, I think the concept we try to match what. You know, as close as possible as at what the game is going to look like. So that's why also it's not you know that rough and sketchy because we try to have you know that's yeah. why like some concepts really are, are pretty close to the you know final yeah. product when you play the game. So it's so it's time consuming you know just to do that. Yeah, like it's six K image, so that's that's pretty big. So that means you know everything needs to get like pretty sharp. So that's why also it's time consuming. <laughs> that's also funny for us, of... man. I never like when people say 4k is large or 5k no, because no, no, I started it's... immediately with five <laughs> that was the normal yeah. form for me you know what i mean yeah <laughs> somebody posts an image of 2k i'm like come on man push yourself because <laughs> <laughs> even before i think like it was like that misconception that you know concept can be like you know like 1k 2k image pretty dirty and, and quick and just I don't I mean, you know, I, mean, I, just, I mean, I would understand that before, right? Because the, we, yeah. uh, as we said, we didn't have the high-res images, but now it's so easy to get high-res yeah, images. Yeah, that's so, so, yeah. Like, yeah. if I see a, a low-res exactly. image in the foreground, I'm like, I cringe, you know? I'm like, why? Like, just find a high-res. It's on the internet. Just go to Google and type large, and you can find it. You know what I mean? It's not... Uh, yeah. It's, it's also possible. like, if you... But that's the problem, right? If you don't know perspective... You yeah. don't know which image that you can manipulate to to form it into that perspective in Photoshop. Yeah. So you're looking for this perfect image that doesn't exist. Yeah, 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 definitely. Right? So, so I think you're saying like even for photo bashing, even if you're gonna be using photos, if you don't know perspective, then it's no use. Like no, it's, it's no, not randomly yeah. bashing photos, right? The term yeah, photo yeah. bashing is a bit uh, unsettling yeah. right? because we're not really bashing the photos, but we're carefully placing them exactly where they should be, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if 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 people talk about that about concept art or photo bashing or whatever, I'm like, man, do you think when Da Vinci was here right now, he wouldn't make use of ZBrush? Like, yeah. obviously, you would make use of that, man. <laughs> if it's available, of course. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just you're using what's a, all all concept art is is just getting your ideas on paper, basically. Yeah. And back in the day, there was only one way. That was through a pencil and a paper. But right now, we have multiple options. So why not, why not make use of it? You know, like yeah, of course, yeah. Like for 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 example, some people when they when they pick up uh, uh, what was it VR, they get used to it immediately. It's just for some reason they like that more, or they kind of understand the way it works. And maybe for you it doesn't work like that, but maybe in another software. So, you know, if if anybody is interested in how to like look up softwares or how you can kind of see which software works for you, is I always say like try to have an image in mind and then follow a tutorial so that you know at least what you need. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say you make an image with like, uh, uh, for example, this one with the bathtub and everything. So, all right, all uh, I need to know how the light works. I need to know how to make squares and boxes. I need to know how to, you know what I mean? Like I need to know how yeah. to, where the light could hit and what, 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 how materials work. So I'm already kind of answering my own questions and then it's just easy because you just type in lighting and blender in, in, in YouTube and you get it immediately. Yeah, yeah.
Like, I just don't get that idea of how do you do this? I'm like typing Google, man. I type everything in Google. I type in yeah. Google how to do control Z. Like I, I typed in today, control Z doesn't work. Like, I don't know why Blender doesn't work, but that doesn't mean you can't look it up. Yeah, I mean, it all falls back into uh, research, right? If yeah. you research something, then odds are you will find a solution. Sometimes it may take you a bit more time, but... <laughs> exactly. You know, that's the... Yeah. All right. You know, and just to round everything up, um, what are your plans for the upcoming year? Uh, where, where can we find your work online, uh, uh, Jad? Uh, I have my ArtStation account, so you just have to type in my name. I have my work up on Instagram where I post uh, more, you know, like if I do daily sketches or I like to sketch cars lately, I'm going to post them there. And, you know, there's also Facebook, but I, I would say mainly Instagram and ArtStation. And for what I'm, I'm up to, I'm just... Uh, I recently uh, started working on a movie, which I can't say what it is, unfortunately. But yeah, the switch uh, from video games to movies was pretty interesting because the pace is is a bit different. You know, it's uh, right. you have to be faster and produce almost something every day. Whereas yeah, the, for Last of Us, we had you know maybe three to five days. Yeah, man. For every image, yeah. depending on feedback. Yeah, it was a bit more uh, relaxed. But yeah, yeah, I'm learning a lot. It's you know always learning and uh, and going uh, forward, I guess. Awesome, man. Good to hear. What about you, Florin? Yeah, I guess you have to find me, uh, I mean, the same art station, Instagram. Yeah. You know, all the same. Just and, type uh, in your name. As far as what I'm going to do, like, yeah, like right now, you know, I'm working like for Netflix. So that's, uh, that's been pretty cool. It's also a different experience because, you know, got the chance to work directly with the director. So yeah, yeah that's yeah. something yeah. also pretty unique that is, uh, <laughs> it's kind of cool, you know, a switch from the, from the, you know, previous experiences, so yeah. that's nice. And that's I nice. guess, you know, in the coming years, like trying to do like like personal projects, something like more push, like either, I don't know, the short movie, even like thinking of maybe video game or something. That yeah, be, man, yeah. That'd be something, yeah. That would be the dream. Yeah, yeah. yeah the dream. to make our own game. That's the ultimate goal. <laughs> A small game. Yeah. By ourselves. Awesome, man. And yeah. what I about guess for, you, Dana? Yeah, I guess for myself, uh, <laughs> uh, lately I, I've I just took a break from work, so I'm working on my tutorial, which would be out, I think, around this time. Nice. Everybody's watching it, but uh, yeah, just trying to, you know, I, I am, I'm also, I, I want to get into the uh, certain type of section into, you know, film or whatever, but for me, I noticed that. Once you get to a certain point in your uh, career and then all of a sudden you see all these offers, it's just for me important to kind of overthink like which one is more important for me and not just based off of, you know, payment or, or a title or something, yeah. you know what I mean? Because like I, I'll never get the same thing as Last of Us because it was so passionate, that project, but that doesn't mean that I can't aim for another one. And also yeah. thinking of, man, you can learn from so much if you just do different things, you know, like you said you worked on a film. And now all of a sudden your brain just calculates differently, you know, so that adds to your personal stuff as well. Same goes for me with tutorial because I have to explain everything in the process. I'm yeah. also like making everything easier for myself. You know what I mean? So it's just yeah. in yeah. every sort of way you can push yourself, you know, like I, I told this to Jad as well. He started, when did you start playing guitar? Like a year and a half or a year? Yeah, I used to play. I mean, when I was a kid, but I stopped for like 10 years and then I picked it up again. And... Yeah. Yeah. You know, that has influence on you, man, because, you know, it's like your brain is working in a, a certain pattern and it kind of yeah. makes a connection. It really I mean, is, man. I mean, it's kind of like you become better at learning in a way, you know. Now you yeah. know how to yeah. learn things, so yeah. I'm going to yeah. use that skill to maybe learn faster than, than I used to uh, before. Everything right? has a pattern, right? Like, first thing you do yeah. is research. Like, it's always the same pattern, kind of. You kind of have to figure that out for your own and just trying to push yourself in different uh ways of doing art is also super important, you know, and not just posting images or not just doing tutorials or not just working yeah. for clients. Super hard, man, that balance. Yeah. Because I know that, you know, like for example, Florent wants to have like more time to work on his personals, but I want to have time to work for clients again. So it's always the it's opposite. Like I always, yeah. 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 you always want what you don't have. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, you always want what you don't have. So, yeah. you know, I'm just trusting the process that I, I'm going with my gut feeling. That's important. I'm listening yeah. to my gut feeling. If I don't feel like that project doesn't work for me, I'm just not going to do it, even if it's like a high end title or whatever. I don't care about that. Yeah. 
So yeah, man, I think uh, that right, rounds guys. everything up. That was a cool conversation. Yeah, I think we've hit uh, the end of our talk. 50 million here. subscribers, woohoo! <laughs> Uh, don't forget to like don't forget to uh check our uh, instagram and our work and appreciate you taking the time checking us out